is possible. It started with a dream. Our passion made a difference. Hello and welcome to today's Stamp Around the UK vlog hop. This is actually my first month with the group and look forward to sharing you my project for today. So let's get you down onto the desk and see what I've got to have in store for you today. My project for the, today's theme is going to be using the Snow Crystal. This is a new stamp. It's one large background stamp. This is a new product that arrived this week and I'm loving it already. So um, I hope you like this. You can see the detail on here is quite rustic looking. It's not a precise image. Um, love this. And then together with that, I'm using these. They are the wonderful snowflakes. Um, and these are all um, die cut, laser die cut. Um, beautiful. So I'm doing a little bit of something different with those. My first piece is a half sheet of Starry Sky. So this is one of our new in colours. And I have scored it in half here. And I'm just going to fold that over and burnish that with my bone folder. And then we're going to be using the craft cardstock. So I have a white matte layer in here and I'm going to be cutting my cardstock first for you. So let's get that done here. So when I worked on this, I started thinking about doing this with a note card, one of our craft note cards and envelopes. And they are the size. These are the, the craft note cards and envelopes. The size of these is five inches by three and a half inches. So I then started playing with the sheets. We have craft cardstock also in sheets of six inch by six inch. So I started playing with a piece of this just to experiment and see how I like my designs. So I'm cutting this down to the size, the same as the front of the note card. So this is five inches. We will need that later. So I'll pop that out of the way and then by three and a half. Because of my sizes here, I have made my white basic white matte layer to be one eighth of an inch larger. So there's just that slight little border around there and obviously on a standard base card. I have already mounted my snow crystal stamp on here. So this image I've placed onto my piece of craft card, I picked it up and it's ready to go. Now I, if you want to make this exactly in the middle, you can just make a little pencil dot top and bottom so that you know that you're getting that in the right place. So I'm just gonna shift that down slightly and make sure that I'm happy that it's in the center that way. And the pieces hanging off the end here are roughly the right size, even either side. Okay, so now I'm gonna slide this across for you and I'm gonna use my Versa marking pad. With the Stamparatus, it is better to have a stamp case underneath here so that the platform is smooth and it's not sloping downhill. We're gonna ink the Versa mark all over here. and then close that onto here. Now we need to have this as a really good image. So I'm just gonna move that magnet slightly out of the way because that's just catching. The magnets hold the image on the stamp in place. So it's not gonna move anywhere. Now I'm going to ink this up more than once. This just helps to ensure that it's a good coverage and you didn't miss any pieces with your ink. And I've paid particular attention to the center of that snowflake. Okay, so I'll slide that out. This can go on the grid paper because I can clean that later. And then I'm gonna take my heat and stick powder. So this is just a piece of scrap card and my heat, Stampin' Up heat and stick powder. I've got this at the angle because I am right-handed, so I like to move the powder across there. Next, we bring on the heat tool and melt this powder. This whole surface here now will be sticky, tacky. Um, Versamark acts a bit, a little bit like a glue. So our next step is to bring on our gilding flakes. So I'm going to just take the lid off here. 
Now, you might, if you're one of my followers, you might have seen me do this before. I do not tip all the gilding flakes out in here. As soon as you lift that lid, there is a suction and it lifts it all up and they go everywhere. So I'm going to just lift this lid gently and take a little tiny pinch and we're gonna massage this in to the surface. Now I'm gonna place the lid back on my pot because I don't want that to be blown away. And here I have a brush, it's fairly stiff. I like to use this and I'm gonna help that massage process by just sweeping this excess back into the pot. All of this is usable. Then if you want to just massage it back in there just a little bit, you can just with your fingertips, any loose particles, flick it back into your tub. I'm just going to screw the lid back on here. So if it gets dropped on the floor, it won't go everywhere. So there is my layer done. Okay. While we have the heat gun out, I'm going to just set that aside for a moment. And I'm going to stamp our greeting. You remember that little tiny piece of card we had earlier? Because the snowflake, um, the snow's crystal does not have any greetings, I've gone to the Christmas to remember, and I'm using the Merry Christmas out of this one. So I have that already mounted on my block and my Versamark ink pad, and I'm gonna tap that. Good covering. That. You won't be able to see, Vers Versamark is clear, you won't be able to see it. And then I have a white piece here and we'll tip the white ink over here. The, sorry, not ink, embossing powder. And tap that back into the pot. Lovely and clear. So tap this back in. And you can see that all nice and shiny on there. Allow that to cool for a little while. So I'm gonna set that aside. Now we're going to build those layers. So I'll return these to the table. So we have the starry sky background and my white layer, and this layer will go on the top here like so. Now I want to just give this a little bit of shading on the edges. So if we set that to one side, I'm gonna bring on my starry sky ink pad and my sponge dauber. Now I like to put use my Dymo printer and just label them so I know which color is on there. I'm just gonna massage this just round the side, just very slightly in from the edges. Now you'll notice a little bit on here where I've been putting the sponge dauber. The sponge dauber has picked up some of my gilding flakes and it's got gilding on here. So I'm just gonna lightly take my uh, wet wipe that's nearly dry and I'm just gonna stroke that off there just to get rid of those gold flakes. Okay, it won't, it's just taken a little bit off the surface, but it's not a problem. All I would say is from that lesson learnt, I would do it didn't happen on my sample one. <laughs> I would maybe do the sponging before you start with your gilding flakes. So that, that could have been done first. So I'm going to turn this over and take my Tombow. And there's just one eighth of an inch gap around the edge. With the Tombow, it enables you to have a little bit of wiggle room so that's like so. Now we're gonna have one more layer go on top of here. So I'm gonna use this messy mat still. And what I've done is I've used the snowflakes 
but I'm going to colour them in. Now here's one that I did earlier, but I want to go through that process. This one has been allowed to dry. So I have taken my Starry Sky blends. So they come in a pair. You have the dark and the light um, for the Starry Sky. I'm going to use the dark one. And we use the wide tip, this wide tip here. Now this is quite, this is laser cut, beautifully laser cut, but it is a sharp edge. So we don't scrub at it because we will ruin our nib. So I tend to stroke these out just gently. Okay, so down the straight line, I will stroke them. Okay, and then fill the other pieces in afterwards. So you'll see this is the one I've just done. When you lift it up, you can see that there are little bits of white on there. So you can go back and fill those in and then you allow it to dry. I'm gonna take this one out today because it's already been allowed to dry. Um, there are these little tiny edges of the longer spokes that are attached. Okay, so as I take that out, I put that onto a clean piece of paper. Look at that, how pretty that is. I can take this onto a clean piece of paper or hold it up in midair and just catch those pieces that have been missed. What I like about the blends, this, these are shiny surface, so when the blends touch them, they do need to be allowed to dry, but they don't smear, they don't leave avenues. You can make some areas darker and some lighter, um, and just to give a little bit of variation in the shading. So I'm gonna leave that one now. So next I'm gonna take my tweezers and on the back, I'm just gonna put some Tombow in the center. Bring up the camera if I can, away from the, the image here so you can see on the black. So I'm just taking this down the sides and I'm just lightly squeezing a tiny little amount. It's hardly touching it, so it will catch in some places but not all of them. But we don't want to have um, big blob, blobs of glue. and that will attach to the middle of my snowflake. And I will make sure that these prominent ones match in line with the, the spokes on here. Okay. It's easier to stick this down while the layer is flat. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this over and I'm going to mount this on some foam pads. And this is going to place in the centre of our card. It is symmetrical, so um, at this stage it doesn't matter if you've accidentally got the fold the other way around, but there is my fold. Okay, so that's ready to go. Can you remember this greeting that we had earlier? I'm going to fussy cut this. That can be reused. And I'll put my glasses on. and then I'll start fussy cutting. Now I have shown lots of um, videos with me really fussy cutting and lives. So I'm just gonna cut around this, very start, start you off like so. And you can see that I'm moving the paper rather than the scissors. So I'm gonna come up into all of these little tiny nooks and crannies, leaving a little board around the edge, but letting them, my fingers are controlling where the scissors are cutting. So I'm pivoting it round and coming around again like so. Come across the bridge of the join, and going to go continue like so. And then we jump to one that Sandra has already made for you. And I've already put some dimensionals on the back of this one. So the dimensionals are just on tiny little pieces of, oops, tiny little pieces of scraps there so that you can see where I've placed them. And then this is going to go right through the center of our card. And I tend to find that the CH from Christmas tends to meet roughly in the middle. So that's good. So there is the centre of my card. Okay, got some dimension on there. Um, and last but not least, we need to colour a few of our basic rhinestones. So again, I go back to the same pen. 
I've got a couple already coloured on here. I decided I only needed to have three on here. But I'll colour a few while I'm here. Again, I'm not scrubbing my nib, I'm just going over the top and round the sides. So we'll just dot a few of those around. Rule of three or five, um, nothing symmetrical. Um, put one down there. And there is my card. Now all we need to do now is just to put the liner in. Okay, so I really like that non-traditional color. I thought it was really, really cute. So I'm gonna take my liner here. I like to have on my liner a little element for my card somewhere. So I'm going to take the other piece that we cut off um, from the 6x6 six six piece of craft cardstock and I'm just going to take my little guillotine and I'm going to cut a tiny little layer. Now on um, trimmers or guillotines, this is the little baby one that Stampin' Up! issued as a limited edition. There is two, two ledges in here. There is one on the metal piece and there's one on the between the darker grey and the light grey numbers. So if you just want a small strip, just tuck it in there until it locks onto that level, hold it firmly and then chop that off. Okay, so we can pop that down there. Now, it is a little bit, wee bit short, but what I would like to do on here as well, I'm gonna bring my trimmer back and I'm going to take a piece of my Starry Sky. Now I have lots of scraps in here, so it's just a case of working out a piece that would work well. Now I think that is gonna be perfect. So what I will do is to bring both those colors on here. I will add that to the layer. If I cut this piece to the length of my white layer with my paper snips, okay, and save that for later, then this piece can be sat in the middle. And then we can use our grid paper, our grid, I've got my mat here, so we can use that to actually place it where we want. So I'm gonna go half a centimetre between two squares and the same down the bottom. Let's get it nice and even. And then there is my panel. It doesn't look so plain and that can go in the centre. Again, even borders, top and bottom. And there is my card finished. Thanks for joining us today in our Stamp Around the UK vlog hop. Details of our next participant in today's hop will be in the description below. We would love you if you could like and subscribe to our channels. And then you can be notified when we release another video. Thanks again for joining us and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.